I want to perform the tour. And I want to do it well and get this maximum benefit out of it. But you have some do's and don'ts in terms of where you stand and where you don't in terms of doing so. Tell us about it. Performing the tawaf can be related or applied to uh, other experience we have in our life. Two things come to mind. One is navigating your way in the traffic, especially getting on and off the motorway, uh, taking tawaf as being on the motorway. Mm -hmm. um, and the second would be um, the second would be around how it is that in the motorway you make sure that uh, you slipstream mm -hmm. and um, you always even though you may not be in the fast lane all the time you're always ahead of everyone else so let's look at commencing the tawaf uh, there's also similarities with salah and prayer uh, and that's maybe a, a, a good departure point because we're all fairly familiar with prayer when we commence the prayer we commence by taking uh, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making takbir raising our hands uh, to our head or to our earlobes and saying Allahu Akbar raise that Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest so the similarity to that in tawaf would be what we refer to as the istila so raising our hands in a gesture towards the Kaaba or towards the Hajr Aswad the black stone as if we were actually kissing the stone uh, very similar to how you would greet someone from a distance you know by, mm. by making a sign that Assalamu alaikum, I've taken your hand. Um, so, you know, s stretching or extending your hands towards the black stone and then kissing the palms of your hands. And that's how you would commence uh, the tawaf. Then in salah, we know that in prayer, we know that we face the direction of the Kaaba and our chest is facing towards the Kaaba at all stages, irrespective of the different positions of prayer. Our front is always inclined and in the direction of the Kaaba. In tawaf, the similarity to this in tawaf would be that at all stages in the tawaf, walking around the Kaaba in an anti-clockwise direction, our left shoulder is always facing the Kaaba. Why left shoulder, not right shoulder? Why anti-clockwise, not clockwise? Well, the heart sits slightly to the left, mm. so it's closer mm. to the Kaaba. That's just one of the many reasons. Uh, and the left shoulder always towards the Kaaba. We would now start round after round, reciting, as we mentioned, glory be to Allah, all praise be to Allah. Allah is the greatest. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. The, the most mighty, the most great. Uh, then tawaf is undertaken in a manner that shows humility, uh, that shows the humbling yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's countenance. And it's an act of ibadah that requires walking, but walking in a dignified manner, in a very slow pace, almost as if you are meditating and contemplating, uh, which makes it very graceful and very beautiful. Now, where do you undertake tawaf so that you are, as we said earlier on, slipstreaming? Mm -hmm. Well, look at the size of the tawaf, meaning the volume of people making tawaf, and in your mind, kind of insert markers at every third. So the Kaaba in the center, and then concentric circles as, you know, one third, second third, third. You mean a third going out, not, not in terms of going around the cube? Yes, a third going outwards. So okay. the Kaaba in the middle, and then where you are on the outside of the tawaf, you know, counting successive thirds. Mm. So the sweet spot for me would be at the end of the second third, at the beginning of the third third. Uh, the reason for this is in the first third there's an interplay between people wanting to make tawaf and people wanting to do other rituals kiss the black stone uh, go and cling onto the actual cloth of the kaaba present themselves at the door ledge uh, of the door of the kaaba etc etc so you know there seems to be some bumping and pushing here in the last third there's huge groups that are always joining the tawaf and exiting from the tawaf so the sweet spot for me in terms of a flow of movement that's graceful, that's almost uninterrupted, is at the change of a point between the second third and the third third. And in that manner, inshallah, with minimal pushing, shoving, and being pushed and shoved, one would be able to undertake the tawaf, remembering that the take home from tawaf was that I am going to get rid of the I and inshallah embrace the we, embrace the Ummah of Muhammad. Sallallahu so, in so far as the we is concerned, the, the, the pushing and shoving in what is, in effect, an ibadah, a prayer. If explain why people do so, and very importantly, how, how do we respond? The pushing and shoving stems from fear, from anxiety, from the fear of losing other people who are in your group. But the rational mind would come to a realization that we're not walking from one point to another point. We're walking around the Kaaba. So we're going to come back to the same point. So that fear can be get can be rid of for us, you know, who are going to be undertaking the tawaf. Um, how do you respond to those who are pushing and shoving? Well, remembering that you could be one of 
I used uh, the parallel or the simile of two children who are sitting in somebody's sitting room. You could be the dignified, obedient child who will sit in a decent manner, uh, you know, and look at the parents and ask the parents, mm -hmm. can I grab an extra sweet uh, from the sweet bowl on the coffee table? Or you could be the young child who's throwing the scatter cushions and jumping all over the place, you know, and the hosts are worried, will this child break my very antique vase in the corner? Choose to be the former, the one who is dignified, because you are undoubtedly in the darbar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, under his spotlight, and everyone is watching you. Okay, I uh, hear that. Yet, I would think people who, who push and shove don't do it to, to harm you, but as you said, there's confusion, there's panic uh, in, in a different cultural environment. So you're obedient, but you still need to protect yourself, right? Yes. You can't get hurt because of the throngs. How, how do you do that? Protecting yourself would mean that, as you would do when you are driving on the motorway, um, always look at your peripherals. When you see a certain group is moving at a pace that seems to be um, you know, almost combative, then to step either to the left or to the right. Um, when it comes to people who are moving in a direction opposite to the direction in the flow of the tawaf, as we mentioned, people wanting to get to the Kaaba, mm -hmm. to the door, to the black stone, etc. For me, what has always worked is to give other people the right of way. Keep going. So there's no confrontation. It's not about my physical strength versus your physical strength. Or we are five people and you are three, so we deserve right of way. No, because it's also from the character of a mu'min and a believer that subhanAllah we give preference to others. So let them pass. And in, in so doing, there's no tension, physical tension, and there's no emotional tension as well. You've let them pass. They are not expecting and anticipating this. They're expecting resistance. You would see that they're almost startled by, wow, someone has actually let me go through. Whereas everyone else undertaking the tawaf is worried about themselves and I need to get from here to the next step, to the next step, to the next step. I like step. it in terms of the we, making sure that the highway is free flowing and that's your, that's your responsibility. 